Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to Victorious Life TV. This is Lisa Boldo and I'm super, super excited that you're here with me. And we've got just about another minute before we're going to get started. So let me just make sure that the camera is right. And let's see. <clears throat> okay, it looks like Facebook is putting it out there right now. <gasps> My goodness, I am excited. And people are starting to join right now. If you'd like to say hi and where you're, where you're uh, say, calling in from, tuning in from, Sandy, welcome. Melissa, welcome. Oh, thank you, Melissa. Okay. Yay. Margaret, welcome. This is so great. And you know what? Once it turns 8 o'clock, just to respect everybody's time, hi, April, um, we're going to go ahead and just get started, okay? I mean, I'd love to say hello to everybody, Wendy, Marty, Stacy. Oh, my goodness. This is so awesome. Um, let's see. No, we still got a little bit of time. Christine, I think that was Lama or Lana Tresh. Welcome, welcome, Sylvia. Welcome. Oh, my goodness. I am so thrilled that you are here with me tonight. And it's the top of the hour. It's 8 o'clock. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive in. So once again, my name is Lisa Boldo and welcome to the Victorious Life uh, TV Facebook show. So this is something that the Lord put in my heart. Oh my gosh, not too long ago. I mean, things were kind of stirring and... But then it really, it just got solidified, you know, and, and I've said this before, you know, when something is the Lord, when you have a strong impression in your heart, it makes you feel excited and, um, there's a peacefulness about it, but there's an excitement and then it just stays there. That's when you know it's God. And so this is something that's been stirring in me for a little while. And, uh, it was just time. The Lord, you know, usually, I mean, I've done three um, uh, Facebook Live events in the evenings, and they were all at the direction of the Lord. And now the Lord has said, it's time to start the Victorious Life TV program on Facebook Live. So here we are. Again, I want to welcome you. And so this is what's happening. Um, you know, I really want to try to keep the show to about 30 minutes or so uh, with Facebook. I mean, it could be a little bit longer, you know, a little bit well, I don't think shorter, but anyway, I just want to say thank you again for being with me uh, here tonight and choosing to spend part of your Thursday night to hear and receive the message that God has for you. And I believe that tonight is going to be such a tremendous blessing. This is a very special Facebook live event because it is the first episode of The Victorious Life TV. So each Thursday evening, we're going to spend about 30 minutes could be 45. I hope you guys are okay with that. Whatever it is, you know, but but I, I do want to try to keep it, you know, to, to a place that is very doable for everybody. But um, sometimes I'll be teaching, sometimes I'll be interviewing someone. And a little housekeeping before we dive in, okay? I've, I usually say this on my Facebook Live events because it's Facebook Live. If you're here for the first time and someone shared this with you and you're curious, that's great, but I don't allow any negativity. You know, please do not on this page. If you don't agree with something, that's fine. But everything that, you know, for those of you who have followed me for any length of time, you know that I speak truth from and I share my heart and whatever God puts in my heart to share with you. So this is a place where Let it reconnect. Oh, good. There we go. Oh, my goodness. If that happens again, just stay. Unless we get cut out completely. But um, I pray against that right now. That no technical difficulties. So in any event, um, like I said, a little housekeeping. No negativity on this page. We are here to encourage each other. We are the body of Christ. And this is what we're supposed to do. You know, I, I want to just mention... Psalm 133, read it when you get a chance. It's short, and this is what it says. In verses 1 and 2, it says, How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Then verse 2 says, Harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head. Oh my goodness. When we live together in harmony, that is precious in the sight of God. 
just as precious as anointing oil, he said, and you know how precious that was. Now, we've got the Holy Spirit today. I was getting a call just now. Decline. Okay, so I, let me just open with prayer real quick, and then we're going to dive in, because what I'm going to share with you tonight is so life-changing. I promise you, you are going to love this. Okay, so Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for this time with my brothers and sisters, Lord. Lord, I thank you. You know that you know my heart and I've been in preparation with you all day praying in the spirit. Father, I pray right now that the words that I speak tonight would be only your words, Lord, none of me, all of you, and that I would share, Lord, only with that which you would have me to share. And I pray that it would be received by everyone watching and under the sound of my voice with gladness. And Father, we just thank you right now for the breakthroughs and the miracles and, and, and your word going forth that is just going to break through whatever needs to be broken through here tonight. And we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise in Jesus' name. So with that, okay, we are going to get started. Um, and God did really gave me um, a powerful message for you tonight for this first episode. And so what I want to do is, you know, and I mentioned that the Lord had given me a specific revelation that took healing to a whole nother level. Now I was already seeing, you know, miracles and, and just all kinds of healings and things happening. And there were so many great uh, testimonials that came through, even from the Facebook live event that I did in November. Um, someone wrote in just one of the things, just, you know, I read it recently that someone said, or, or maybe she just said it today or yesterday. Anyway, she was healed of a rotator cuff injury. And to this day, her rotator cuff continues to be healed. And there were many more. Someone's ankle got healed right in their living room. Actually, it was somebody's mother's ankle. There, there were many, many, many. And you can go back to that video and read the comments. And glory to God, I'm going to share with you tonight, oh my gosh, exactly how to receive your healing, your breakthrough, your miracle, whatever it is in the area of healing specifically. So... Before um, I tell you that, you know, it says in the Bible, let me just see this here. Psalm 96, 2 and 3. This is awesome. It says, sing to the Lord, praise his name each day. Proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds am um, I'm sorry, among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Oh my gosh. So, Again, tonight's message is super special because first, I'm going to tell you about a couple of amazing things that the power of God has done recently. I promised I was going to share this a couple weeks ago, and tonight is the night. So first of all, and then I'm going to sh share with you the revelation that God gave me and how this will work for you too, okay? This is not just some formula. This is truth, okay? So just recently, um, a, I say recently, it was a, a few weeks back, a friend of mine called me and said that she was in the hospital. She had had 40, four zero fibroids removed from her uterus. And one day I'm going to have her on to give her testimony. She doesn't want me to say her name because she's going to give her testimony. But she said, I'm welcome to tell everybody, you know, what God did. So she had these 40 fibroids removed. Sorry, this is trying to go to voicemail. Anyway, she had these 40 fibroids removed and then there were some complications because her stomach was very distended and um, there was no rhyme or reason, you know, and she couldn't eat anything. She couldn't go to the bathroom. It was just awful and she couldn't get released until, you know, I know it sounds whatever, but until she was able to, you know, go to the bathroom and have a bowel movement. So she said that, she was uh, concerned that the doctors were saying that they might have to cut her open again to find out why this is happening to her. And so, uh, I apologize. Hang on one second because this, this screen is messing live. There we go. Oh, I am so sorry about that. Thank, get disconnected. I apologize. Holy vey. Okay, sorry about that. So back to the story. So they were saying that uh, they might have to cut her open again to find out what the problem is. And so 
A mutual friend of ours had said, call Lisa and ask her to pray with you. She called me like five times that day. I didn't know she was in the hospital and I finally called her back. She left me a message saying I'm in the hospital. So she told me what was going on and this is what I said to her. I said, listen to me. It was like the Holy Spirit just came on me and I said, no one is ever going to cut you again. I said, you are gonna be released in two days and you're gonna tell the doctors that you want some soup. And so this is what I said to her. I said, you need, I need you to pray with me and repent for having come into agreement with the spirit of fear because, you know, when all this was happening, you know, and, and, and trauma and, and any other spirit that opposes the word of God in Jesus Christ. And she said, okay, okay, I'll do it. So she did. And, and she meant it with her whole heart. This woman is a believer. She's awesome. She's 40 years old and she operates in the prophetic. She's amazing, right? But I mean, when things happen, you, this is why we need the body of Christ. We need other believers. So anyway, she prayed with me. She repeated after me. She meant it with her whole heart. And then I said, now, do I have authority to speak? She said, go. So I commanded her intestines to be normal. I commanded any obstructions, inflammation, everything to just be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. And, you know, just, just speaking to the situation, to her body, to her intestines. And I declared and decreed that no surgery would be needed. She would have a bowel movement within a few hours and she was going to be absolutely good to go in Jesus name. And she would be released and she would be eating just fine. So in any event, she said that she was so fired up and she had a Jewish doctor. And when he came in, she said, doctor, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. She said, and no one is ever going to cut me again. And I'm going home in two days and I want some soup. And it was the cutest thing when she was telling me this. And the doctor was like, oh, whoa, oh, oh, wait. Okay. Long story short, they let her go in three days not two because she had you know her bowel movement within a few hours but you know how sometimes doctors hospitals whatever they wanted to keep her for an extra day for observation or whatever but anyway she went home in three days no surgery needed she's absolutely good to go but here's the thing i got a phone call a couple weeks later and she said to me lisa she said i have a testimony of a praise report and i'm like Okay, another one, you know, and this is what she said to me. She said, the day they did the surgery, they found these fleshy like deposits on her large intestine, like outside, uh, you know, on her large intestine, the organ. They biopsied it and then they called her in and the doctor sat with her and said, it's mesothelioma, it's cancer. And of course, she, you know, she was, it was like surreal. And so that they said, we want you to go for, you know, further testing. Anyway, long story short, she went for more testing, a couple different places, but she had some kind of a CAT scan that, um, that dissects the, the thing so they could pinpoint and see, you know, whatever. And so she said to me, then she met with the oncologist, you know, to get the results of it and, uh, you know, to see how bad it was and whatever the next course of action was. And the oncologist said to her, now listen to the wisdom of the doctors. Because I said to her, I said, but listen, when she first told me, she said, it's, they said it's mesothelioma. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, and I wasn't even concerned because we prayed after she had the surgery, right? So I said, well, this was after, you know, this was, you, this was diagnosis. Anyway, they saw this the day of the surgery. We prayed after that. So I said, what happened? So she said she went for the CAT scan, sat with the oncologist, and the oncologist said, um, she said, your, your blood, she goes, your blood work looks good, your iron's a little low. Well, she just did lose a lot of blood with 40 fibroids being removed. And, um, and the doctor said, but she said, we're not finding anything on the CAT scan. Yes, praise Jesus. We're not finding anything, but this is what the doctor said. But the only way we're really going to know if there's nothing there is to go in and you know cut you open do surgery give you a low dose of chemo and make sure that you're good to go and I said to her girl I said and what did you say I said because don't you think that what God started he would finish and she goes I know she goes that and she goes no I'm not having you know they, they didn't find anything they want to cut you open no so Long story short, she is doing great. She started a new job. She's good to go. 
Okay, that was the first one. Second one, and then I'm gonna give you the revelation, okay? <gasps> this is so good! So on St. Patrick's Day, and I, I just, I know the day, March 17th, right? Just about four weeks ago, my husband comes home, right? My husband comes home and it's like five, six o'clock in the afternoon and I'm in my office, um, is I work from home and in my office and I hear, you know, he says, babe, come here, come here. And it's funny because if my mother-in-law is watching this tonight, we haven't said anything to the family, but this is what happened. So he's like, babe, come here. So I go in the kitchen and he goes, look at this, look. And he had a lump sticking out of his neck. I kid you not. It was like this, this big. If you've ever seen like a Frankenstein movie, the bolt that in, in the neck, that's what it looked like. And I said, babe, I was like, oh my gosh. I go, how long has that been there? I wasn't scared. I was just like, what? Like, like it was for me, it was like that holy anger. Like what? How long has that been there? Like, like that doesn't belong there. And he's like, I don't know. He goes, but I probably should have it checked out. And so I said to him, you could, I said, or we could take care of it right now. And he goes, yeah, let's take care of it right now. Because I know, if any of you saw the interview that I did with Pastor Steve Hannett, you know, a few weeks back, Pastor Steve had a lump the size of an egg in his neck, and it was cancer. And I said to my husband, I said, I know that when you saw that lump, you thought of Pastor Steve. And he said, totally. I said, okay, I need you to repent for coming into agreement with the spirit of fear as soon as you saw this thing, and we're going to take it from there. And he was like, okay. So we held hands. And, you know, I just said, Mike, just repeat after me. And he did. And then I said, now, do I have authority? He, he was like, go, babe, go. Yes. You know? So I commanded in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I had him, you know, repent. He repented. Just so you know, he repented for coming into agreement with the spirit of fear, but also um, for coming into agreement and any other spirit that opposes the word of God, Jesus Christ. And then... I said, okay, now I'm going to take authority. And I said, in the mighty name of Jesus, <laughs> I spoke to that thing. I said, I command. First, I said, I curse the seed and the root of this lump, whatever this is, in Jesus' name. I said, you don't belong here. I said, um, this is under the curse. And I said, this, this, is, this is not part of the blessing. It does not belong to you. And I said, in Jesus' mighty name, I curse this thing. And I command it to disintegrate to nothing in Jesus name and I command all your good cells to eat up any bad cells in Jesus name I curse any inflammation and I command this thing to just die at the roots right now in Jesus name and it to come to nothing in Jesus name and he goes I agree he, he well how did he say it he goes he goes I'm in agreement he goes and as far as I'm concerned he goes it's done now it's funny because it's one thing to hear me tell it because I'm really passionate rah, my husband's like an everyday guy. He's awesome. And I told him, I was like, I really want to interview you on Facebook Live, you know, for the people. He's like, babe, soon, one day. He But he's up at four in the morning and, you know, has his own business. And he was just like, not tonight. And I'm like, well, I'm telling your story. Tell it, you know. So, okay. So, this is what happened. I We prayed over that thing. And I, I say prayed, but really we spoke to it right? That's what we did. Jesus didn't say pray for the sick. He said, heal the sick. Okay. Now you can say, well, that's not sick, you know, per se. It's a thing that doesn't belong there. Anything that's going on in your body that is not, that's causing you pain or fear or trauma or whatever, it doesn't belong there. You need to speak to it. Okay. So we did this. So this was Friday, March 17th. And Sunday, we go next door to his uh, mom's house every Sunday for dinner with the family. And his sister is a nurse. And he's sitting on the side of the table where she could, I was, and, you know, and to me, it almost looked like the thing got bigger. But I didn't say anything because I'm like, no, we already spoke to it. I don't care what it looks like. And I'm not saying a word. But I was praying under my breath, like, Lord, cover him in Jesus' name. Like, don't even let his sister see this thing, right? She never saw it. She never said anything. So I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. So we went home. This was Sunday. Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon, it's like 5, 6 o'clock. And I hear him in the bathroom upstairs. And I'm in my office, you know, again. And I hear, ha, 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 ha. And I'm like, 
uh, babe, what's up? He's like, Leaf, come here, right? So he goes, look, look, God did it. This is what he said. And I'm like, and I looked at it and the thing went from this to the size of like a BB. It shrunk like from uh, to this. And he goes, it's done. It's gone. And I said, yep, babe, in another two days, it'll be history, nothing, gone. And I, and you know, and this this is so wonderful. Oh, and just so bottom line, it is completely gone. And it was like two days later, a total of seven days, this thing completely disappeared. And I was like, wow, you know, God is so good. And this is the revelation that God showed me. I mentioned in the video um, before this, you know, when I was announcing the Victorious Life TV, that I cried out to God with all my heart one day. I was just, I don't know, I was just like overwhelmed with um, just wanting, I mean, my heart is just, I can't stand to see anyone hurting or, you know, just in need and, you know, or sick. And it, this is just my heart, you know, so I was crying. I was literally crying out to God. And I said, Lord, I said, I want to represent you so perfectly, so solidly, so effectively. And I said, show me, I want, and this is what I, I, I said, I want to have the faith of Jesus. Like all the time, I want to have the faith of Jesus. Show me how to have the faith of Jesus. And I'm crying, I'm like bawling my eyes out. And all of a sudden, he starts showing me. Okay, are you ready? This is so awesome. It changed everything for me. It just took things to a whole nother level. Now, he showed me this stuff before my friend, before this happened with my friend and before this thing happened with my husband. So I knew what to do. You know, I, I, I knew about uh, coming into agreement with, you know, I've talked about that before, but how do you have the faith of Jesus? How do you, I was like, Lord, you know, we hear a lot of times in Christian uh, churches or in Christian circles or preachers, you hear them say, Jesus already paid the price for your healing, right? By his stripes, you have been healed. It's a done deal, right? And then the next thing they would say is, but you have to receive it, right? I would say the same thing. And so you know that I was healed of yeah, actually, it was this wrist, um, you know, the a cyst the size of a BB, and I covered that in the, the healing event that I did back in November. So this is what God shows me. Wow. You ready for this? This is what he showed me. He says, as soon as I was crying, you know, and then I was like, quiet, right away in my spirit, he starts showing me. He says, the law of gravity. And I said... <laughs> And I'm like, I need things like kindergarten simple. And the way that I teach and explain things, kindergarten simple, right? And you guys know that. And because if I don't understand it, I mean, you could still understand something, but I just need it so like a kindergartner could, you know, understand. So this is what the Lord says to me, the law of gravity. Now, I don't know too much about like science and physics and all. I, it wasn't my, it wasn't my area, right? In school. But he says the law of gravity. And I'm like, Okay, so this is what he shows me. This is my notebook. This is a building. Okay, this is a building. And this is what God showed me. He says, this is you. Right? The law of gravity is um, a universal law, but it's really a spiritual law because who put it there? Scientists can't explain it. Nobody can explain it. Right? The cosmos? No. The creator of the universe, God, put it there. Right? So this is what he showed me, the law of gravity. And I'm like, okay, the law of gravity. This is a building. This is you. <laughs> if you go to step off the building, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? You're going down and nothing is going to catch you, right? It's just because it's a law that's in place, right? It's going it, to... It, it, that's it. anybody steps off of a building that's it it's gonna take a few seconds to go down but then done game over it's over and I'm thinking like why is he showing me this or telling me this right but this is what he showed me the law of gravity the building you could have shown me my arm no a building because this is how powerful he wanted to make this this is how you can have the faith of God. This is how you can receive your healing once and for all. 
The law of gravity is a done deal, right? It works the same for everybody. It works the same for everybody. It's a law. It's in place. You can't change it, okay? The Lord said to me, so it is with the law of the Spirit. When Jesus was on that cross and he said, it is finished. Oh my gosh, the Lord showed me. He said, now, when you, you know, when you sin, right, you come into agreement with the enemy, the legal, the, the enemy has a legal right to keep you stuck. That's why Jesus said, repent, when he came preaching, repent. You have to repent, meaning, I'm sorry, and you mean it with your whole heart. I'm sorry that I came into agreement with the enemy, that I've been living, you know, agreeing with him and doing what he wants and not, you know, living according to, to God. Jesus told people, repent, right? And, or he would say, your sins are forgiven. Okay, back to what he showed me. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm trying to, oh, I want to make this so easy to understand. The law of gravity. He said, so it is with the law of the spirit. When Jesus said, it is finished. He said, now, when you speak the word of God to something, it's like that word, that force is so powerful. It's like a woo, 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 woo. It's in motion and it will crush whatever it is. It will accomplish what it was set out to do if, it, if there's nothing obstructing it and there's no agreement with the enemy. Okay, so, so what do you do? That's why before I pray for people, I, I say, you know what? Just mean it with your whole heart and tell the Lord that you're sorry for having come into agreement with the enemy. Because then the, the enemy, right? He's called the accuser of the brethren, the adversary. All these legal terms, right? But when you repent for having agreed with him or, you know, for having sinned or done things his way, and you don't have to list your whole laundry list of things, but, you know, you can take care of everything just by meaning it with your whole heart and say, Lord, I am sorry that I came into agreement with the enemy. If you know the area, sure, you can say it, you know, in, with the area of fear or, you know, whatever, uh, rebellion, for example, cigarette smoking, addiction. The root of that, and I'm not picking on smokers, but it's rebellion. You know it's not good for you, but I'm going to do it anyway, right? says right on the cigarette thing, may cause cancer. I'm just saying. So the bottom line is, and, and listen, it could be anything. It would be going to mediums and psychics, right, like I did. I had to repent for all of that, right? And so when you repent first, now the enemy legally has to take his hands off of you. He's got no more grip on you. And now you speak that word of God to that thing and woo, 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 woo. Left, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So it's in motion. And as long as you don't come into agreement with something opposite of that, now the devil's very crafty. You know, like I think, you know, if we had been at dinner that night and maybe that's why I was praying, don't let anybody see this because the first thing, you know, that a family member would say, and you know, when they love them and they care, would be like, oh, you better get that checked. It could be cancer. And the minute that seed is planted and then it's, oh, hmm, there can be that agreement with that. Oh, heck no. You've got to watch what you come into agreement with. I'm telling you, this is, it's imperative. So this is what God showed me, just like the law of gravity. When you speak the word of God to something, it is done. So when my husband and I came into agreement, first he repented for having come into agreement with the enemy, with the spirit of fear. As soon as he saw that thing and any other spirit that opposes Jesus Christ, right? Because he may have and not even realized it, right? And then, you know, I use the authority that God has given me to release that that healing and commanding that thing to just dry up and die to to disintegrate to nothingness and he said i'm in agreement and as far as i'm concerned it is done we spoke in jesus mighty name and that's what god showed me the law of the spirit it's already done so in other words people are saying please god please heal me heal me jesus said it is finished so he doesn't, he's not going to, okay, help me, Lord. It's already finished. Just like the law of gravity, it's something that's 
already in place. It will work the same way for everyone when you focus on Jesus, the finished works, the finished works of Jesus. You know, I want to, I just want to read, um, I asked the Lord to give me a scripture about agreement, Jesus and agreement, Jesus speaking and agreement. And man, the Lord is so good. And he brought to mind John 14, 30 and 31 in the amplified, because you know, different versions, but the amplified says this, Jesus said, I will not speak with you. I will not speak with you much longer for the ruler of this world. Satan is coming and he has no claim on me. And then in parentheses, it says no power over me, nor anything that he can use against me. But so the world may know without any doubt that I love the father. I do exactly as the father has commanded me and act in full agreement with him, with the father, right? So we want to make sure that we are in full agreement with Jesus, right? And if we came into agreement with something else, we need to repent for that. And, and then we can speak the word of God. And because it is finished, just like the law of gravity, it is with the law of the spirit. The, the Holy Spirit said to me, just like the law of gravity, so it is with the law of the spirit. It's already finished. So it's not like Jesus has to die for you again and pay for yours. No, it's done. It's a done deal. And so I really hope that this has made it more um, uh, easier to understand. I'm telling you, this was a revelation that it was just amazing to me. You know, okay, yeah. When Jesus, it says in Matthew 4, 17, that when Jesus from that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near, right? Repent. That was the first thing he said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. In Luke 10, 9, Jesus said to his disciples, heal the sick and tell them. Sometimes he would say, heal them and then tell them. And sometimes he would tell them and then heal them. The kingdom of God is near you now. So your words are so, so powerful. And I know, I mean, I want to just mention one other thing here. Um... Galatians 2.20, right? It's a great scripture because sometimes you'll hear, you know, um, okay, that you need to have faith in the Son of God. And then some translations will say, have the faith of the Son of God, right? Well, either way, it's having faith in Jesus, the finished works. He already paid for everything for you. He took it all. He took shame. He took addictions. He took sickness. He took every single form of dis-ease and, and, and pain and everything in his body so that you would not have to suffer any longer. But listen, there are some people out there that are just, you know, it's like, I don't know what it's going to take for them to to, to, I know for me, I had to surrender my way of doing things. I just got, you know, when I hit rock bottom, I literally got on my knees and I said, God, I just said, help me. I don't want to die. I said, if you help me, you know, like I'll do anything. That's, I, that's how desperate I was, you know, and he did, he came in and, but I surrendered and I said, teach me. I don't, I'm just tired of living my own way. And I was angry. I was depressed. I was needy. I was codependent. Oh, some of you are probably like, what? Yes, I am serious. I was so depressed. There were days, there were times I didn't want to get out of bed for like three days. That's awful. Calling out of work. I'm sick. I don't feel good because I was tormented in my mind, you know, anyway, but the Lord took it all. And now my whole, everything I do, I'm passionate about helping you to live victoriously. You know, this really did change everything. And I want to read Galatians 2.20. It says, I've been crucified with Christ. Paul is saying this. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. And some translations say of the Son of God. Faith, the faith of the Son of God. But listen, this is, this is the whole thing who loved me and gave himself for me, the finished works. 
And so, again, the law of gravity, so it is with the law of the spirit. You repent, the enemy has to, you know, he's, if you have nothing in common with him, the minute you repent, you have nothing in common with him, so he's got no power over you. Now you speak God's word and, and then don't agree with anything else. Oh my gosh, I really hope that, that this is making sense to you guys. And I want to now, I just, I have notes because, you know, otherwise, ah. Okay, let's see. You know, Proverbs 18, 21, your words are so powerful. You've got to watch what you come into agreement with. The enemy is so deceptive. Let me just take a look and see what time it is. Um, okay, so I want to help you to get free right now. For those of you who are stuck, you know, there may be some of you watching who you've never repented and given your life to Christ. That's step one. That's step one. And so what we want to do, um, what I want to do right now is for those of you watching who've never given your life to Christ, I want to help you to be, and it's called being born again. And then I did a video, you can just scroll back recently. Um, I did a video about being born again where I explained it. I think it's like a 10 minute video or something, but it will bless you. And it really helps you to understand, you know, the whole born again, what it means, how your sins are washed away. You're, you become a new creation. You have no more past. It's awesome. So, um, if you'd like to get born again, I'm, I'm going to pray a prayer and I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. And then after that, I'm going to help you to get unstuck wherever you might be stuck. Okay. Does that sound good? All right, so for those of you who have never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, I want you to just pray your prayer with me, mean it with your whole heart, and it's going to bless you. Ready? So just say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Now remember, if you're born again, the Bible says you're a saint. Okay, but Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross and paid for my sins forever. Say it out loud right where you are. And I believe that God the Father raised you again on the third day. I know that you are alive now and live forever. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart now and change my life forever. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Jesus, in your holy name, I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, I promise you, you are born again. And woo, welcome to the family of God, my brother, my sister. Oh, well, praise the Lord. Okay, so now I want to help you to get unstuck. I want to help you get unstuck from whatever has been keeping you sick or in bondage okay and so I want you I'm gonna take you through the same prayer basically that I took you know Mike through and that I took um, my friend through and if you will do this I'm telling you you are going to be free so I'm gonna take you through this, through this prayer and it doesn't matter listen we didn't pray that she would be healed of cancer because she didn't even know that it was there but God healed her anyway because we she repented for coming into agreement with anything that opposed the word of God, Jesus Christ, right? And then we took authority and the word of God went forth and healed her. She was healed. The power of God, Holy Spirit, dunamis power, the power of God went and did it. Okay, so here we go. So for those of you who would like to be unstuck right now, I want you to pray this prayer with me and I want you to mean it with your whole heart, okay? Just mean it with your whole heart and you're gonna see. And then don't speak against it and don't come into agreement with anything else. And if you find that you do, repent for that, okay? And then just declare, you know, by your stripes, Lord, I thank you, I'm healed, I trust you, okay? so. Repeat with me right now. Just say, Heavenly Father, right now I repent. I'm sorry that I came into agreement with the enemy and any spirit 
that opposes the word of God, Jesus Christ, and for living according to the flesh and not your spirit. Wash me clean right now in the blood of Jesus and fill me with your spirit, O oh Lord. Okay. Glory to God. Now, I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to release the authority that God's given me. He's given me a gift of faith. I believe, that, yes, there's a gift of healing, but you know something? I'm not any different than you, all right? I'm not any different than you. I just go after God with all my heart. I want to know what does the word say because I know what belongs to me. And I'm here to help you understand what belongs to you and healing belongs to you because by his stripes you were healed. Okay? It's it's remember, it's already done. Just like the laws of gravity, but you have to do your part. You repent for any agreement with the enemy and then you, you take your authority and stand and you will see the glory of God. Okay. So now Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I speak, I speak blessing and no curse, Lord, over my brothers and sisters watching right now. I take authority. I take authority in the name of Jesus and I come against any sickness, all disease, all sickness, all lying symptoms of the devil, no matter what they are, everything from cancer, every type of cancer, arthritis, diabetes, all sickness in the body. I come against it right now and I want you to agree with me right now and say, and I am in agreement in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command any sickness in your body or symptoms of sickness to be eradicated, burned up and destroyed now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now, right now. I'm telling you, my friend, that word that word of God is in motion right now. And remember, just like it takes a few seconds to, right? Even if you were to jump off that building, it's going to take a few seconds and, you know, done. That word of God is now in motion. It's in motion. And I remember too that day with my husband. Lord, I thank you right now for the miracles and the breakthroughs. That day in the bathroom with my husband when he showed me, he said, yeah, Lise. He said, and it's like the only thing, that, okay, that word is in motion. Woo, 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 woo. Motion, right? He said, and the only thing that can stop it or reverse it, put the brakes on it, is you speaking or coming into agreement with something else, right? And then, so it puts the brakes on, and then reverse. No, no. And I want to mention something else. If somebody is, um, maybe somebody's been, um, uh, they're like a recovering, what they call an addict or something like that. And, you know, I had um, an email today from somebody and it was just the highest honor of um, this girl that I know that she said, you know, I want to know the Lord more because I've been watching your videos and the way you explain things, I want to know him. I, I, I just, I like, I just, I, I, I started crying. I was like, oh my God, this is just so wonderful. My whole everything was just amazing. But she said something about being, she said something like, um, I'm a recovering addict, but clean, been clean for like 14 years. Oh man, here's the deal. No. You're not a recovering addict. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus. That was your past. That is not who you are today. So don't even say the words I am because the great I am lives in you. So don't even say I am, you know, I, 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 listen, I, I'm not criticizing programs out there, but I'm telling you the great I am lives in you. Your past is your past. Once Jesus comes in, that past is it's history. No, you're not a recovering whatever. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Just like, and I'm going to share one more thing and, and we're going to go, but just like the word remission with cancer. 
I woke up one morning, this was just not that long ago, a couple months ago, and I saw the word remission go right across my face. And I'm like, remission? And the Holy Spirit said to me, tell the people not to use the word remission anymore. And I was like, whoa, because he showed me. If you, if someone says to you, the doctors say, oh, you're cancer free, but you're in remission. No, you're cancer free. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. So if a friend says to you, oh, are you, oh, you're in remission. See, this is how subtle and crafty the enemy is. Oh, you're in remission and you go, yeah, you just came into agreement with allowing that thing to come back again. You say, no, I'm not in remission. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus because the word remission, re means again. Mission means a purpose to be carried out. You do not want to say that you're in remission because then you're agreeing with the enemy to allow that thing to come back to you. Uh-uh. You declare, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am never going to have cancer. Ever. It is never coming back. It is not to touch my body in Jesus' mighty name. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay. I just want to um, make sure. You know what? I just... I released what God has given to me for you. And Father, right now in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for the breakthroughs. I thank you for the miracles. I thank you for the healings. And I'm going to ask you if you, the power of God touched you or you're, you know, you've come into agreement, I want you to post your comments because you might have a lump and you wake up tomorrow morning and it's gone. Or you might have a, you know, an ankle that's been like, and it's healed. Do something that you couldn't do. Just like when Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. And I mean, the withered hand was just, woo, awesome. <laughs> right? It was healed. So all I'm saying is a lot of people give up too soon. They don't see their miracle right away. And they're like, oh, I guess it didn't work. Bam. There's agreement with the enemy. Don't do that. Stay on that thing. If my husband didn't see, it took seven days for it to be completely gone. And let me tell you something. On Sunday, that thing even looked bigger. And I told him, I said, I didn't tell him on Sunday, but I told him afterwards, I said, mm, that thing was even looking a little bigger to me on Sunday, but I didn't say anything because we already agreed. And that was the last thing I was going to do is speak anything that wasn't in agreement with, you know, what we said in Jesus name. And that thing disintegrated to nothingness. I'm telling you, this is the key. You've got to understand that it's already finished. It's already done. Just like the law of gravity, so it is with the law of the spirit. You speak God's word, right? Remove any agreement with the enemy first, and then you speak God's word. And remember, that force is in motion. Just because you don't see it immediately, it's on its way. Don't give up and don't cave. It's in motion, right? The fig tree, it, I'm just saying, it, it would, as soon as Jesus cursed the fig tree, it was in motion, right? You just have to, if you understand that when you speak God's word, it has to happen by default, just like the law of gravity, by default, it has to happen. So my friends, I really hope that this has been um, a real blessing for you tonight in helping you to understand you know, how to receive your healing, how to believe, you know, how to receive and believe and receive. Remember, like the law of gravity, by default, so it is with the law of the spirit. It is done. Remove the agreement with the enemy, speak the word of God, and remember that it's in motion. And the only thing that can change that is you coming into agreement with someone else or something else and speaking it that then you put the brakes on and even reverse it don't do that you have the keys so I want to thank you for being here with me tonight on the victorious life TV um, I know we went a little over but you know what I share my heart here and that's the beauty of Facebook live you know if it goes a little bit longer then hey you know so be it but I just want to thank you for joining me tonight I have a really special guest joining me next week so it's going to be awesome. Make sure that you leave your comments below. I love to go back and read your comments. Let me know how this has been a blessing to you and share it with others if, you know, if you believe that 
it would help them. If you got benefit and you know, I see hearts flying, yay. If you believe that, um, you know, it will help someone else, share it with them. It can be, you know, one word from God can change everything. So again, I just love you guys. I bless you in Jesus' name. And remember, if Jesus is your Lord, you're already blessed. Ephesians 1, 3, you're already blessed. So walk in that. And I just, um, I don't think I left anything out tonight. And if I did, we'll catch it next time. But I pray that this has been a tremendous blessing for you. And I will see you again. I'll see you on a Facebook Live really soon at the Victory Cafe. All right? I bless you and have a great night. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye now.